So continuing on, uh, there is a excellent book by Horowitz and Hill. It's called The Art of Electronics. It's in the reading list and it's in the li available in the library. I think it's ebook as well. Uh, they they look at the concept of um, transistor gain uh, by by this image, which they call transistor man. Uh, effectively, what you've got is a man inside this this circle, and he's looking at the uh, the base current coming in and basically saying okay well whatever I see is the base current I'm going to turn this uh, variable resistor up in order to increase the uh, the collector current IC and they they show uh, the equation here now they use a HFE now HFE in this concept is with with regards to the stuff that we look at uh, we can consider that beta is the same as the HFE which is the small um, current gain of the the transistor in other texts you'll see there's large hfe small hfe beta transistor gain they're for subtly different things but for what we're looking at beta is the uh, the, the current gain of the the transistor so if you think about uh, this this image as it stands we've got this uh, variable resistor and a variable resistor as we alter it is going to uh, change the the level of current flowing through it and if you think about this um, this name transistor it's effectively a changing resistor so that gives you a clue as to um, one of the clues is to say okay well this is a current operated uh, device if we look at this transistor circuit it's relying on the fact that um, you know we've got this uh, silicon diode operation what that means is as we uh, as we turn up V in here as we ramp up V in uh, the forward voltage of this diode remember um, if it's up there, if it's um, 0 0.7 volts or less uh, this this diode won't be conducting won't be forward biased so effectively this transistor won't be switched on but the moment we get to this 0 0.7 volts level or around it then this transistor will switch on now what that gives us is the effect of in in, in some instances we have uh, current flow which is um, uh, proportional to the input current uh, multiplied by beta so if we've got no current going in then we've got no current uh, IC and if we've got no current IC we've got no voltage drop across RC so with no current going in this uh, output will be effectively at this V plus level because there's no voltage drop across RC. Now when this transistor is fully switched on and we've got IC flowing we, we get a voltage drop uh, across the, the RC resistor which means whatever's left here is V plus minus the uh, VRC and in the most extreme case when this is switched on uh, completely this is effectively um, going to put a short circuit in our circuit so this point is connected to this point so we get zero out so what that gives us really is um, is, a, is a logic gate so nothing in we get uh, V out uh, V out equal to VCC and if we get something in we, we can effectively get a zero so um, this is a fundamental uh, use of, of transistors uh, in the use of transistor logic and without these we, we wouldn't have iPhones we wouldn't have anything uh, in terms of electronics uh, so this was uh, kind of as a replacement to the old valve um, uh, which is okay but if we feed audio straight into this circuit here we've got nice audio and uh, what would you expect on the output well anything below 0 0.7 volts we're going to get nothing anything above this transistor will begin to switch on but there's nothing to 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 control um uh you know how how much this switches on so effectively what we'll get is a sort of a square wavy uh, distorted output which isn't isn't great now these regions of where, when the transistor's fully switched on and and fully switched off uh, are often referred to as the saturation and cutoff regions so it's saturated uh, when it when the transistor is fully on and it's cut off uh, when the transistor is off now that's okay for transistor logic because we want either fully on or fully off 
but for audio uh, we want somewhere in the middle and we call the middle region the active region of a transistor uh, so if we look at a transistor amplifier or, or, or why we can get amplification from this well we know that a small current in gives us a large current out so if we know that if we can control this um, this transistor point so that it's halfway between being uh, fully switched on and fully switched off we can allow it to give us an amplification factor um, but we can stop it slamming into the the top uh, supply rail or the or the bottom uh, supply rail so we want it to sort of sit in the middle nicely um, so this would be our what we what we classify as a Q point or quiescent point. So ideally, if this was uh, say nine volts, and this was zero volts, if we put no audio in, we want this to be sat at four point five volts, and that would allow four point five swing that way and four point five volts swing that way, determined by the uh, nine volts divided by two. So if we look, this is a transistor uh, regions that are kind of outlined by the collector current there and the, the VCE. Now the VCE is the voltage that's dropped across the transistor itself. So if we placed a resistor there, then obviously we can determine by the potential division what the point is at, at that point in the, in the circuit. Now you'll notice that without any uh, input current so when, when IB is very low we're in this cutoff region so the transistor is completely cut off and we'll also see that as the value of VCE drops when it gets to you know a very small value uh, say so 0 volts and 0 0.1 volts then we can say that um, this is this is almost sort of fully switched on uh, so we can say that it's saturated. We say that the um, you know the IC is a maximum value, and so we're saturated. Now we want to operate somewhere around here, which gives us uh, maximum sort of swing, if you like. And we certainly don't want to operate over here where VCE exceeds. So if we have a VCE rating for a transistor of 10 volts and we we end up with 20 volts across it, it's going to damage the, um, the transistor itself. So we need to be careful we don't go anywhere near this range. Um, so we want to be somewhere in the middle and this is what we know we, we, we uh, specify as the uh, Q point. So I've, hi I've highlighted the characteristics of uh, the cutoff region, saturation region and the active region. This is the important region that we want to live in when we're designing amplifiers and the way we can do this is by uh, biasing the transistor so we allow a little bit of current to flow into the base uh, without audio being applied and that will bias us into this Q point so we can we can go and uh, plot characteristics of transistors and we can draw this line which we call a load line now this point here is determined by our uh, maximum um, when when VC is equal to the the supply voltage itself. So that's that's determined by the supply voltage. You notice down here six is half of the supply voltage. So I can then start to I put my first tick point in. Now this line here, this uh, slope, is determined by the uh, supply rail that I choose and my RL resistor, the load resistor that's connected to the collector. Um, so this point here you can see and that's, that gives us our maximum current rating when the transistor is fully in its saturated. So imagine the transistor's um, uh, fully switched on. What's, what's going to be the maximum current flow through the system? Well that's going to be uh, like looking at a circuit where we've got a resistor there, we've got a transistor, but the transistor is fully switched on. So now if that's VCC, the maximum current there 
if that's RL is VCC divided by the RL. So that gives us our maximum saturation current. What we do then is draw a line and where these two intersect, that is where if I supply a base current of 60 microamps, that's where my output of the amplifier is going to sit. So it's going to be at 6 volts and it's going to be drawing this 40 milliamps. Now, I've got to design my amplifier. If I want it to be lower power quiescent, I've got to live somewhere down here, which means I'd bias it with 20 microamps. And I'd also perhaps have to uh, uh, either increase RL or reduce VCC, you know, so I could do that type of thing. It really depends on, on how you want to design your amp. So usually when we're designing amplifiers, we might design them using uh, multiple stages. So this might be our voltage gain stage, and then we'll have a, a current gain stage. And this will be made up of a bunch of transistors to give us the voltage swing that we need. And then this will be a push-pull stage, which gives us the power we need. So we can kind of uh, design each stage to be optimal, uh, to give us the optimal quiescent conditions that we want. This is a typical voltage gain amplifier. This is a class A. But you'll see that the Q point here, the uh, the Q point is measured at this point here for the amplifier. And you'll see um, that whilst there is no input, then it's sat at VCC divided by 2. That's often preferable because it gives us that, that swing. And with no input voltage here going, and with no um, audio signal going in, this DC biasing Q point, is set determined by these R1 and R2 uh, resistors. The gain of the amplifier in this case is simply minus RL over RE. That's it. And so knowing simple design equations, we can design an amplifier to give specific gain. So that's one volt. If that was 10, that would be 10 volts. Um, so we get the gain from there. We can bias with R1 and R2. It becomes quite easy when we're um, uh, looking at uh, designing amps for a specific purpose.